Hiya, and welcome to this week's Neonates in a Nutshell. Um, it's Emily today talking about neonatal skin. So this will be the first um, out of some skin skin presentations. Um, so today we're mostly looking at kind of common skin findings in the newborn, rashes and some birthmarks. So the skin is the largest organ in the body. This includes the nails and the hair. It's a complex multifunctional structure and it can give you clues to some underlying systemic disease and conditions. So functions of the skin. So it's a protective barrier against water, uh, water loss, barrier to physical and chemical changes, and also helps with control of body temperature through your sweat glands and blood vessels, and also appreciation of sensation. So the anatomy of the skin. So looking at this picture, it's kind of split up into three different levels, the epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. However, within each of these, there's also then several other little layers. So the epidermis, this is your outer layer. It contains no blood vessels and is a physical barrier to irritants and allergens. Then we've got the dermis, which is the inner layer, and it also offers protection and nourishment to the epidermis and is also really good for kind of wound healing. Then we've got the hypodermis, which is the subcutaneous tissue, and this is the storage site of fat. So looking, thinking of the anatomy of the skin, this can then help us kind of to, to look at the preterm infant and their skin and how this differs. So premature skin, it's much thinner. So the top layer is thinner, um, this means there's not as much protection um, and there's also this can lead to high rates of water loss um, and the kind of transcutaneous layer so the fat layer is also a lot thinner they don't have very much fat um, so this can mean that there's difficulty maintaining homeostasis. So for infants who are 23 to 25 weeks gestation their layers of their skin may, may take longer than a month to actually be fully functional to those functions that we've um, looked at on the previous side, slides. So in terms of our preterm babies, we obviously use humidity within the incubator and this is to try and help with those rates of water loss and um, mean that they don't lose as much through their skin because we're helping with that humidity. Because their skin is a lot thinner, this can also mean that then um, it's kind of a portal for infection as there's less of a protective barrier there. So we're just going to go look through some um, pictures of skin and different findings. Um, if you want to play along, then just kind of have a little guess at what these are and then the following slide will kind of tell you what it is and we'll go into it in a little bit more detail. So what is this? Seen in newborn babies, it's vernix. So um, this is seen at birth, white greasy covering on the skin surface of the newborn, mostly seen in term babies and the, the kind of thickness of it increases with the gestational age. So it's a protective covering and um, is usually wiped clean at birth and then the rest kind of comes off within the first couple of days. What is this? So kind of scaly skin there, again, something that's quite common in the term infant. So again, it's just peeling skin. So dry, flaky, um, mostly common in kind of post-term babies and um, doesn't need any treatment and will resolve on its own. You may just need to give the parents a little bit of reassurance that this is a normal kind of skin, skin finding. So now just looking at a couple of rashes. Um, so with this baby, there's kind of a bit of a pink rash with then smaller spots within it. And this is called erythema toxicum. So it's seen in 50% or more of term neonates. It's benign and no treatment is required. And it usually appears within the first two days of life and resolves by day 10. And again, it's that kind of blotchy pink, pink rash um, with central pustules. It can be seen mostly over the whole body, so the trunk, face and limbs. However, you do not want to see it on the palms and the soles. 
um, of your hands and feet. And um, if it was, then you may need to kind of look into this a little bit further and obviously look at the whole clinical picture of the baby. So what is this? So this can look similar to erythema toxicum. Um, however, the spots are a little bit more defined and a little bit more spread out. A little bit pustular. So this is pustular mel melanosis um, and it's vesicles with the pustules present. And this is present from birth, more common in the darker skinned babies and any area of the body can be involved. Um, again, they kind of rupture fairly easily and can leave a bit of pigmentation on the skin. However, this all results within the first few weeks of life. It is a normal skin finding, but obviously um, if those pustules seem to be a bit larger or the baby was symptomatic and um, seemed like they had an infection, then obviously then we would um, look further into this. So what is this one? So they're little little white spots, mostly seen on the face. So this is milia. So it's sebaceous gland hyperplasia from the uh, mum's hormones. So it occurs in up to 50% of term neonates and tiny little um, white papules on the nose and cheeks. And it usually just resolves on its own within the first four weeks of life. However, it can take a little bit longer. So now this one, again, it's another common finding, usually on the face. Um, little clue for you. It's something also that teenagers get. So this is neonatal acne. So again, it's little pustules. Um, develops in up to 20% of newborns, usually within the first week of life. And it's possibly due to mum's hormones as well. And resolves on its own kind of by four to eight weeks. We're just going to take a little look at some birthmarks um, and these are kind of common ones that, that we may see. So this birthmark on the back of the, the neck there and then also on the forehead. So these are just va vascular birthmarks. They can be raised or flat and um, also may be called capillary nevi. So they're light pink colour, usually on the forehead, upper eyelids or the nape of the neck. Seen in 40% of newborns and you may hear it be referred to as um, a stalk mark. So supposedly it's where the, the back in the days they said about um, stalks picking up the babies by the head and delivering them to their parents. So these can darken with crying and activity. Again, it's just explaining to parents that this is normal. And again, they tend to just fade on the face over time. So now this one. Um, again, it's a birthmark, however, slightly different to the one before. It looks a little bit more pink um, and is a bit more over the face. So this is called a capillary hemangioma. Um, it's flat. Another name for it might be a port wine stain. Um, purple to red birthmark caused by dil dilated blood capillaries and can vary in size. It doesn't tend to fade and may require some cosmetic treatment later in life. Um, the things to be aware of, it can be associated with Sturge-Weber syndrome. So Sturge-Weber syndrome affects the development of certain blood vessels and causes abnormalities in the brain, skin and eyes. So um, this is something that we really need to look further into. So a good way of determining determine whether this needs to be investigated further. We look at um, whether this uh, birthmark is within the trigeminal region. So as you can see, the trigeminal nerve here, um, it kind of goes off to three different branches. And um, if the hemangioma was in any of these areas where these nerves are, it should be investigated because it could be that it's linked to the Sturge Weber because that is where it commonly is. So now this one, what is this? So again, it is a birthmark. Um, it's quite a raised one. This is a raised capillary hemangioma, might also be called a strawberry nevi. It's superficial and it's just an overgrowth of, of uh, vessels. 
at birth it might be kind of pale or red and a small patch um, and then grow quite rapidly within the first 6 to 12 months. 90% um, are completely gone by 17, 7 to 9 years old and it only needs treatment if it's within a critical site such as your eyes, mouth or airway. Because it grows quite rapidly, obviously this needs um, referring on quite quickly um, if it is in one of these in one of these areas. So now this birthmark, mainly seen on the back and the buttocks, this is a slate grey nevi. So it's grey to blue um, black patches, most commonly over the lower back and buttocks, and more common in dark skinned infants. This usually fades by seven years of age, um, and it's something that we need to be aware of and to document well, as this can be mistaken for a bruise. So obviously just making sure that you're putting that on your body map of the infant. So now these little tiny kind of tan colour, um, light brown patches. These are called cafe au lait. So light brown patches ranging in sizes. Um, most, if there's just kind of one to three, are seen um, and they're nothing to be, to, they're just benign. Um, they're nothing to be like, worried about. However, if there's more than six of these, it might be a marker for a more serious syndrome such as neurofibromatosis. So neurofibromatosis, it's a genetic disorder and the tumours can develop in your nervous system. So this might be an indicator um, to this condition. Okay, so that's just a little kind of summary of um, where we've looked at some of the common findings of the newborn and also some rashes that you may commonly see and also some birthmarks. So next time we'll develop this further by looking at the skin and in terms of infection and some things that you might see um, then. So thank you very much for watching and I hope, hope you've learned a little bit. If you need anything or to go through anything, then obviously you know where to find us. Please speak to any of the ANMP team um, or drop us an email. Okay, thank you.